uh, episode, I almost said Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 55 of Films and Fermentation. Tonight is Oscar snubs and flubs in honor of the Oscar ceremonies that just passed this past Sunday. Welcome again to Films and Fermentation, a movie and alcohol podcast. I'm Leo. I'm Kevin. I'm Mike. We're just three friends who like to talk shit about movies while getting shit faced. Mm -hmm. On tonight's episode, we celebrate the Oscars. They're historic, star studded, glamorous, and very often pretentious. <laughs> In the many years that the Oscars have been around, there have been many times where mistakes have been made and things have gotten a little awkward. You Tonight think? we're going to celebrate. No. The Tonight we're going to celebrate the awards by highlighting those snubs and flubs. Don't forget to drop us an email at filmsoffermentation at gmail.com or visit us at linktree.com. That's l i n k t r e e dot com slash films and fermentation to find all of our social media and podcast links. So let's start it off as we usually do, Michael. This day in film history. This day in film history in 1930, the Motion Pictures Production Code is instituted, imposing strict guidelines on the treatment of sex, crime, religion, and violence in film for the next 38 years. Yes, I think it was uh, it was uh, referred to as the Hayes Code. Yep, uh, because that was the person who 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 you know enacted the code. And uh, it, it gave us such, uh, you know, uh, such moral integrity as uh, married couples, even in a movie, couldn't be in the same bed. <laughs> Flintstones. Meet the Flintstones. Oh, Flintstones. Yeah. And then, you know, <laughs> so you had like, uh, uh, I Love Lucy, when she was pregnant in one season, they couldn't use the word pregnant on TV. It was considered inappropriate. So they just <laughs> went around it with knocked up. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what they went with. Bun right? in the oven. Bun in the oven. <laughs> so yeah, the Hayes Code. And then in 38 years, so that was 1968, when they instituted the uh, MPAA ratings. That's when you got your R's, your PG's, and all that stuff. Even then, they didn't have their shit figured out because Midnight Cowboy got an X rating. Cool. And uh, nowadays, that movie probably have a soft R. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Uh, we have a very special fact this week. Mike, give it a give it a go here. Well, this week happened this week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Will Smith slapped the shit out of Chris Rock at the Oscars <laughs> on live TV for making a G.I. Jane joke about his wife. <laughs> what the fuck, Will? <laughs> I call it the slap heard around the world. <laughs> It's so bad, it's on sports radio. Yeah, I know. It's it, it, <laughs> it, After it happened, like nobody can tell you anything about the rest of the Oscar ceremony. <laughs> like Chris Rock was out there to give out the award for documentary. Mm -hmm. And the award went to Questlove, who's the band leader on the Jimmy Fallon show. And because he directed a documentary Sto about... Uh, yeah, Stories of Soul, right? Yeah, it's a documentary about the music scene in the 60s. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it was it's a it's a pretty good documentary. I watched it. And I'm like, poor guy lost out on his uh, his moment. <laughs> yeah, that's a everybody, <laughs> cause everybody's talking about this, and it's funny. And so I, you know, I think now is a good time as any to share my screen with you guys, so I can show you this meme that I saw earlier today. Oh, there's been hundreds of them. Longing, rusted, furnace, daybreak. 17, B9, 9, <laughs> homecoming, 1, freight cars. <laughs> oh, that's good. For those of you who are listening to us and not watching this on YouTube, I just brought up a meme that I found earlier. It's a picture of Jada leaning over to Will Smith at the Oscar ceremony. And in the caption, it has her reciting the words that activate the winter soldier. <laughs> I thought that was that was one of the better ones that I've seen so far. There was I, one I saw. It was a video, and it was the Men in Black song, and you know how it starts off, dee, 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 and the clapping. Mm -hmm. Every time they hit the clapping, he was slapping for Rock. <laughs> I actually saw one I thought was good. You know how they have that uh, meme with Batman smacking mm -hmm. Robin? So yeah. Says, mm -hmm. we, 
we can finally retire this meme and they got it. Well, I saw one. It was a scene from SpongeBob SquarePants where SpongeBob's on stage talking over a microphone, and there's a fish in the audience yelling something at him, but they dubbed it in with the "Keep my wife's oh, name yeah. out your motherfucking mouth." mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, there's so many of them. Well, what was the other one? Oh, the other one was. Uh, I got in one little fight, and my mom got scared. So it's like it's the lyrics from Fresh Prince, but they they, mm-hmm. they change it to uh, to like you know keep my wife's name out your motherfucking mouth or something like that. I saw the one where <laughs> it's got the slap. It's yeah, like, I got one little fight. Then it's got the picture of the mom from the mm-hmm. Prince of Bel Air. Yeah. go to live with your aunt, uncle, and Bel Air. Yeah, <laughs> and I heard a joke recently. It was. Um, what did the uh, forensics team find when they went up to investigate uh, Chris Rock's face? Fresh Prince. Fresh Prince. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bob. What's up? Okay. Old people oh. love on air. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, that's against the motion picture production. Code. <laughs> yeah, this is one a of, one of our, our facts now. about tonight was about the original motion picture code, which said that wouldn't have been allowed on screen. <laughs> okay, Bob. I'm not in the view. Oh, you're not in the view? Okay. <laughs> Adrian will be calling her after. Uh, yeah. The other side. <laughs> she said, Adrian, I'll be calling you soon. So. <laughs> all right i love you bub. love you katie <laughs> <laughs> only live on a live podcast where you get that kind of love all right where are we at <laughs> we are at uh american craft brewery destination so we're mixing it up here instead of a fun drink fact you're going to give us a place to visit yes uh and this one's actually pretty close okay oh this is Dogfish Head Craft Brewery in Milton, Delaware. Yes. I've been uh, there. It's good. Hey, good. <laughs> <laughs> this self-described off-center brewery was founded by Sam, excuse me if I screw up his name, Calagroni. Okay. In 1995, it gets his name from the Dogfish Head, Maine, where Sam spent his summers as a child. Beyond its core location in Milton, the brewery has alehouse locations in G- Gathersburg, Maryland, and Falls Church, and Fairfax, Virginia, as well as a seafood restaurant in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Probably its most famous beer is Midas Touch, made with honey, muscat, grapes, and saffron. Dogfish br- merged with Boston Beer Company in 2019. Now, I've had Dogfish had you know, yeah. years. I, I've never yeah. been to the brewery. You were at the brewery, Kev? I was at the uh, seafood restaurant in um, Rehoboth, and I had gone to the brewery, I want to say, one year. Yeah. Nice. Uh, nice. Midas Touch is a really good one. I I also thought they made one called Namaste, and I think I'm wrong about that. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think they did Namaste. I'd have to look look it up. But they usually do around this time of year, as a matter of fact, around Easter, they do an apricot beer, which is actually pretty tasty. Hmm. Let's see here. Dogfish Head Brewery. Mm -hmm. Uh, There we go. Nothing like dead air. (laughs) The uh, 60-minute IPA, which I've had, and it's, it's not bad for IPA. Uh, 90 minute Imperial IPA. They have a pumpkin ale. I like their pumpkin ale. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Sea Quench Ale, which is a fruited gosh. Uh, I don't know if I've, I don't think I've had that one. The Namaste White. Namaste, Namaste White. White. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's. Uh, I think you'd like that, Mike. It's a wit beer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Flesh and Blood IPA. A lot of IPAs and ales. Uh, some fruit. Ales, uh, sour ale. There's a brown ale called Palo Santo Maroon. There's an IPA called Romantic Chemistry Midas Touch, which is, like you said, one of the most popular ones. Uh, a lot of different like IPAs. There's like a 60 minute, 75 minute, 120 minute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they have one called Liquid Truth Serum. They have a pale ale called Dragons and Yum Yums. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> one of those ones i've i've tried because of the name and didn't really like it much yeah uh they have have one called the pennsylvania tuxedo miles davis's bitches brew (laughs) 
That's a stout. That one's actually really? pretty good. <laughs> That's a stout. That one's actually pretty good. <laughs> what the hell was that? Uh, I've got some microphone problems, it looks like. No, I was talking, and then, like, I heard my voice, like, echo over myself. There's yeah, one but... called 61, which is uh, a grape ale. American Beauty. Sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's a good one. Coffee stout. Beer for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> this okay. is the one I was thinking of. Aprihop. Okay. So it's an apricot flavored uh, IPA. So yeah, Dogfish Head. Great. It's a really good brew. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to take a trip there one day. That sounds like a good yeah. place to try out. Yeah. So I got some notes from the last show. I had said that the uh, one movie that we had on the list called Love at First Bite was an, as a uh, Jim Carrey movie, but I was wrong. I looked it up. There were three movies that I had confused. Love at First Bite was 1979 starring, Jar starring George Hamilton. It is Dan. Jim Carrey was in a vampire film called Once Bitten. Right. And Nick Cage was in one called Vampire's Kiss. Okay. And, and now Nick Cage... It is Dracula. In the Renfield film. <laughs> yeah. Well, he has all the Affinity Stones. Yes. If I had time, I would have put that as my background just now. <laughs> uh, I have some more fake trivia. Remember, we did the fake trivia a couple episodes mm -hmm. ago. To prepare for his role in Space Jam, Michael Jordan played nine years in the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's this part about Smokey and the Bandit is still haunting you? Smokey and the Bandit is still haunting me because I made that uh, that joke. The trivia last week was how Smokey and the Bandit was cock blocked twice by George Lucas. Yes. Uh, the next day, Katie and I are scrolling through movies on Amazon Prime, and in my recommendations is Smokey and the Bandit. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so tired of these fucking algorithms listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I got one more little fun piece of trivia for you. Uh, this is about the Yub Nub song from the end of Return of the Jedi. Yep, no. So that's the original yep, Ewok no. song, not the one that was replaced in the, uh, the reissue. <laughs> yub Nub. Yub -nub. Right. So they, if, for those who don't know, when they did the special, what were they called? Special editions? Yeah, the special releases. Special releases. They replaced the Ewok song with a Coldplay cover. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a Coldplay cover. That's right. So oddly enough, though, the Yub Nub song was written by Joe Williams, who is the lead singer of Toto, the band that wrote Africa. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yes. He is the lead singer of Toto. He wrote the Yub Nub song. He actually wrote it in English, and then they translated it into what they call Iwakis. With the help of his father, composer, John Williams. Williams. Wow. <laughs> I never knew that the lead singer of Toto was the son of John Williams. And they wrote the Yub Nub song together. <laughs> yub nub. Yub, nub, yub, nub, nub. They also wrote the original song that was sung in uh, Jabba's palace before they added the, uh, you know, the alien screaming into the microphone. <laughs> the original song. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was a fun little piece of trivia. Well, that's the music that probably got snubbed in the Oscars. That's some <laughs> sure. original music right there. I'm, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> so what are we drinking this evening, gentlemen? Kev, I know like your wife is really uh, uh she's champing at the bit for me to at open the bit this here up. So, so you go it ahead. is Oscar night. Mm -hmm. or, you know, Oscar night. So we are drinking champagne. We are drinking La Marca Prosecco champagne, sparkling wine. Yeah. Sparkling wine, I guess, because it's not from it's, it's, it's champagne, <laughs> France. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we have been blessed with family who loves us and and you know, wants to welcome our home with bottles of champagne practically every time they visit. <laughs> and we appreciate it. So I don't mind. Now, that you, we... now you have a chance to use it. it. Well, yeah. I mean, I've been bringing bottles of it to school, kind of, you know, <laughs> as, instead of a juice box. Yeah. I have my other juice box. So um, is that how you get I'd... kids to calm down? That's, that's exactly it. No, it <laughs> it's, it's like, come here. As a fellow teacher, that's just how you get through your day. <laughs> <laughs> Screw the kids. All right. I think it needs something stronger than Here we go. Hey. Hey. Opa. 
that actually oh, had a, uh, that actually made a really good sound on the recording here. That's, yeah, that, was, that was pretty strong. That so is my old strong. wifey. <laughs> my love. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Mike, what do you got going on? I got it for you. Oh! 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 <laughs> She slapped the shit out of him. <laughs> Woo. He didn't even make a G.I. Jane joke. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you are listening to us on Spotify or Stitcher or iTunes or whatever, I highly suggest you check Keep out our my YouTube name channel. out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> highly suggest you check out our YouTube channel so you can see the live <laughs> recording of Kevin getting his shit slapped out of him by his wife. And her saying, Keep her name out of his damn mouth. <laughs> yeah. Keep her name out of my mouth. So, Mike, uh, can you follow that one up? <laughs> Not really. Uh, <laughs> but text Adrian and ask her to come by and slap you. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, I went. I went easy tonight. I went to mm-hmm. something that I haven't drank on the show, but okay. I drank several times. I went with the Shamley Creeks Churchville Lager. Okay, Church. I like nice. Churchville. Yeah, it's a good lager. I decided that it was time to go back into the mixed drink well. Because Mike, had a hard week. <laughs> well, Mike, I recently killed every single one of those beers you gave me. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, How are they all? They were good. All of them were very, very good. I even like the mango peach one, and that's not a beer that I normally would drink. <laughs> uh, I was at my uh, my buddy Sal's house the other night, and I took the three cans that I had with me with a couple other beers. We're sitting at his bar, and I'm drinking through them, and he's like, uh, he's like, how are you doing over there? you need a glass or anything? I was like, no, I finished these three already. We were only like there like 20 minutes and I'm just like, I was like pounding cans. <laughs> so anyway, I so said tonight I was going to go back to the, uh, to the mixed drink well for our Oscar special. So I found a, a very special drink uh, that is uh, a tribute to this year's Oscars. It is a half an ounce of gin, mm-hmm. half an ounce of rum, mm-hmm. half an ounce of vodka, mm-hmm. half an ounce of Everclear. Which Ooh. I don't have ever clear, so I just use moonshine. Oh, that's a good band. Lemonade <laughs> and just a splash of Sprite. For color? Uh, it's a very good drink. It's a little bitter, but it's very good. It's called the Bitch Slap Cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> I already thought this was an episode that had like off the rail potentials. <laughs> and and then that had to fucking happen. <laughs> and I'm like, this is this is really this is gonna be like the main joke of the night, I think. So before we get into our, our snubs and flubs, we should uh, I feel like we should take a look at what actually did win this year. Mm-hmm. For, for those people who, who forgot that there was still like a whole half a show to go after that slap. Mm-hmm. So best picture winner. I really thought it was going to go to The Power of the Dog because it was the movie that I hated the most out of all the ones that I watched. <laughs> um, but it actually ended up going to one that I was really surprised. It went to Coda mm-hmm. and the Children of Deaf Adults. And it is, mm-hmm. uh, it's a really good movie. It's a very, very heartfelt movie. The guy that plays her father in the film is an actual deaf actor and he won the Best Supporting Actor Award. Nice. Uh, this year for it. And he was, he was really, really funny in it. There's a scene in it that, that they, they show all the time on the previews and stuff where he has to go to the doctors because he has a, a burning sensation in his crotch. <laughs> and, his, and his daughter, because she's the only one who, who can hear, has to mm. be the translator for the doctor. And he's saying all these things in like sign language that are just really like insane and inappropriate. And she's trying to figure out a way to translate it to the doctor. <laughs> to understand. <laughs> it's really, really good. It was a good movie, and I'm I'm glad it I'm glad it won because I really didn't want Power of the Dog to win. I like the link that you sent us. Um, I guess it's ba- the the it's the IMDb uh, page, right? The yeah. IMDb page where people could vote and mm-hmm. what actually came out of it. So who was the uh, the high vote was well, was Power of the Power Dog. of the Dog, which I'm really oh. there's a lot of people out there who really like mm. found something. Out. I maybe I gotta watch it again or something. I don't know. I voted for Dune. I thought Dune was the best movie of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, next on my list is Belfast. I want to check it out because I was really happy to see Kenneth Branagh finally win an Oscar. Yeah, He won for best screenplay, so I want to check that out. Uh, I've seen most of the movies on the list except for Drive My Car, Belfast, Licorice Pizza, and King Richard. 
uh, I really didn't have much of an interest in King Richard to begin with. Mm-hmm. Uh, drive now you get car. bitch slapped if you watch yeah, it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> drive, drive my car. I'm not sure about it. it's a it's a, a Japanese film and it's over three hours long and I don't know if I have the commitment to that. Uh, but Belfast and Licorice Pizza are ones I'm definitely going to check out at mm-hmm. some point. Will Who's Smith that? won for Best Actor even after that debacle. Uh, I I was pulling for Andrew Garfield for Tick Tick Boom because I really okay. thought it was an amazing performance that he gave this year. Uh, Jessica Chastain won for lead actress for The Eyes of Tammy Faye. It was mm-hmm. one of, it was one of those years where it was kind of like she was going to run away with it because there really wasn't any other competition for her. Uh, and I'm kind of glad because I like her as an actress and I feel like she's she was going to win one eventually. Uh, Troy Troy Kotzer is the best supporting actor. He is the uh, the deaf actor who played the father in Coda, mm-hmm. uh, and he was really really good. Um, the only other person in this category who I thought might have won was Jesse Plemons for Power of the Dog. Uh, Ariana DeBose won best supporting actress for West Side Story, and it's amazing because she won the best supporting actress for playing Anita. And Rita Moreno, who was in the original West Side Story, won Best Supporting Actress for playing Anita. <laughs> so that's two actresses who won. She becomes only the third actor or actress to win an Academy Award for playing the same character. Hmm. The, other, the other ones were uh, Marlon Brando and De Niro for playing Don Corleone. Mm-hmm. And uh, technically not the same character, but kind of. It's... Uh, Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix for the Joker. Right. So that's that's pretty amazing. Uh, best director was Jane Campion for Power of the Dog, and it's it's odd when somebody wins for best director, but their movie doesn't win best picture. Mm-hmm. And it's also odd that the best picture winner didn't have its director in the category for best director. That's that's one of those weird, you know, Oscar things. Uh, like I said, Kenneth Branagh won for Best Screenplay, which I was happy to see. Coda won for Best Adapted Screenplay. And then Dune cleaned up the Oscars in almost every other category that was a non-acting or picture Oscar. It was like sound, special effects, uh, editing, all that stuff. Yeah. Cinema, cinemato- definitely should have won for cinematography because it was one of the mm-hmm. most beautiful films I've seen this year. So I just wanted to go over the Oscars before we went into the snubs and flubs. With a lot of snubs. Yeah, cue Oscar music. So I looked at it. This is how I kind of categorized it. <clears throat> snubs are Oscars. Uh, the mistakes that they make where like somebody should have won an Oscar or, or at least should have been nominated or like a movie won that really, you know, in most people's opinion, wasn't the best picture that year. That's almost every year. Yeah, it's almost every year. And flubs are the embarrassing Oscar moments. So I figured we'll do the snubs first and then talk about some embarrassing like Chris Rock, get the shit slapped out of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what, I added that to the list recently. <laughs> so my first uh, major snub is that Alfred Hitchcock, considered by many one of the greatest directors of all time, never won an Oscar. That's, that's a crime. Yeah, for anything. He, he was nominated for uh, Psycho. And I think he was nominated for, I want to say Vertigo, maybe Rear Window, one of those, one of the ones that he's like mm-hmm. most known for, but has never won an Oscar. Not and for the birds? Not for the birds. I don't even think he was nominated for that. And it's one of those things where it's like, oh, well, he's a good director, but he directs like horror films, you know? Yeah. And you don't oh, So it's it. the category that kind it's, of excludes him. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like that. That uh, That's sci-fi. Yeah, it's like it's um, the same thing with sci-fi. Like Dune gets a nomination for Best Picture, but it's not going to win because it's sci-fi. Yeah, same thing with Star that's Wars. What, I mean, that was probably <laughs> Spielberg too. You know, yeah, Spielberg for the beginning the of longest, his career. Yeah, for the longest time, he was looked at as like he's the box office guy. You know, mm-hmm. he's he's a good director, but all he does is direct box office. He doesn't know how to do art. You know, and then he did Schindler's List and mm-hmm. Saving Private Ryan and all these other ones, and then they're like, oh, I think well, early in his know? career with um, The Color Purple, mm-hmm. that was art. You know, that was that was that was, that was yeah. his first attempt at it. Yeah. Scorsese was the same thing. Mm-hmm. Scorsese didn't win an Oscar until 2007. The man's been making movies since the 60s. <laughs> what but was that? That was um, Gangs of New York. Gangs of New York. Uh, what? His best uh, director was 2007 uh, uh, was um, 
No, it was um, Departed. Departed. Okay. Departed. He went for, and that was funny because that was a remake of a of a a, a Chinese film. Hmm. Like he wanted to, <laughs> so his first directing Oscar was for a remake that he made. 1982 saw Gandhi beat E.T. for Best Picture. I just watched E.T. recently. I couldn't tell you the last time I watched Gandhi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's one of those things where like, what, which one's the movie that's going to stand the test of time? And Richard Attenborough, who directed Gandhi, admitted that the Academy made a mistake. Yeah. And Spielberg uh, later on uh, paid tribute to that by making him Mr. Hammond in Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> now uh, we know the quotes like i'll be right here and mm -hmm. et phone home you know mm -hmm. uh can anybody think of any quotes gandhi said no thank you i'm full yeah <laughs> <laughs> i am ben kingsley <laughs> <laughs> he got the oscar for that right he won the oscar for best actor and i think it, I, th it. I think attenborough won for best director that year as well um, I, I'm not surprised with him winning Best Actor that year, but the Best Picture uh, is the one that I'm like, eh, well, you know. it was a sci fi mm. movie, it's not gonna win. <laughs> it's a sci fi movie, it's also one of those things like the popular movie really never wins. Nope, it's 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 a rarity, like when Lord of the Rings Return of the King won. It's one of those things. That's why I don't watch the Oscars that much because I like never see any of the movies that's on there in mm. the 90s. In the 90s, it kind of shifted a little bit because you had a lot of movies that did well at the box office winning mm -hmm. awards so you had like silence right. of the lambs was it was a mm -hmm. major hit yep. you had uh forrest gump was a major hit Mulholland uh, drive, <laughs> drive. <laughs> i saw that i still, <laughs> I still don't know what the hell that movie was about <laughs> um but no but the 90s that you, you saw a lot of that happening uh 1995 <laughs> this is me again doing my my bitter thing Saw Shawshank Redemption and Pulp Fiction lose Best Picture to Forrest Gump. I feel like Pulp Fiction and Shawshank Redemption have stood the test of time, and Forrest Gump not so much. Hey, it has a it's a chain of restaurants now, so that, that's mm. a, it's Pulp Fiction, <laughs> the Shawshank, yeah, yeah. Jack Rabbit Slim, Jack Rabbit Slim's from Pulp Fiction, and Shawshank's is uh, it's called uh, Brooks Was Here Diner. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Morgan Freeman and John Travolta also lost the Best Actor Oscar to Tom Hanks that year. Well, that's that thing. That's that part. If your actor can do a mentally challenged person, you wouldn't ask. <laughs> but he had also won the year before for Philadelphia, and it's that's mm -hmm. a rarity too when you have an, an actor win two years in a row. I think it only happened one other time in, in Oscar history. This is more like my own personal thing. Like I feel like those two movies, Pulp Fiction especially. I feel it was a much better movie than Forrest Gump. Even though Shawshank's my favorite film. I would have taken either one of those. Uh, 1941, Citizen Kane loses picture and director to John Ford and John Ford's film, How Green Is My Valley. Of all the movies of John <laughs> Ford, that one? Yes, that's probably not really? his best. It's one of his earliest ones, too. <laughs> and, uh, and it's funny because I've said before, like... Uh, uh, Orson Welles has stated that his three favorite directors are John Ford, John Ford, and John Ford. John Hughes has never received a nomination for director or writer in an otherwise lauded career. <laughs> the man wrote Breakfast Club. Mm -hmm. The man wrote uh, Sixteen Candles. The man wrote Ferris Bueller's Days Off. The man wrote. Has Science. he written anything that involved adults as <laughs> the center? Well, well, it, uh, he also brought on, you know. Bill and Silent Bob trying to find that town. Yeah. In Dogma. Shermer, <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> they find out that it didn't exist. <laughs> Where all the weeds at. <laughs> um, but like, I mean, the man had a, a celebrated career. He was he was a beloved director. Yep. He um, wrote very good movies, but I'm just realizing now as you go over, I'm like, I'm thinking of those movies. They're all they're all adolescence based, you know. But you gotta think like most directors have some sort of like niche. I mean, like mm -hmm. Scorsese's mostly gangster films. Mm -hmm. He does do something else occasionally. Mm -hmm. uh, John Hughes, I think, just like he he found his niche and he just stayed there. Like, he didn't really kind of like um, too much. Kind of like Burton, Tim Burton. 
He got his Burton. niche. Yeah. Tim Burton has yeah. his niche, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Tim Burton's one of those guys that have never been nominated for something. He probably probably should have been nominated for Ed Wood at least. Yeah. And, and didn't receive it because he's well, one of the directors. Who's didn't given, Ed Wood receive some some accredits or some? Um, it was um, Martin Landau won Best Supporting Actor for playing Bella Lugosi in the film. And it was nominated, I want to say, for like screenplay or something, but it didn't receive as many nominations as you think. I think okay. another one of his movies, um, Tony Todd got like costume or something like that. Yeah, it got like costume or music or something like that. Yeah. He's his animated films have been nominated for a few things here and there, but a lot of a lot of times like the nomination doesn't include him. Right, mm-hmm. something within the film, like costumes or, or mm-hmm. cinematography or something like that. Right. So he's a guy like you could throw in there too. Like Tim Burton's probably somebody should you know not later in his career when you throw in things like Alice in Wonderland. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is a shit show of a film. Not Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Not Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That should have been nominated for an Academy Award for creepiest performance by a <laughs> possible pedophile. Well, they, they should have got you know Robert De Niro. Yeah, that would have been a better move. <laughs> would have won that, that Academy Award back in the 90s. <laughs> Here you go. Here's another one. Stanley Kubrick, another like celebrated director, had never won an Oscar for directing. His only Oscar win was for special effects for the movie 2001. And oh, that, really? Yeah, and in that, in that year, the special effects category was kind of like an honorary category. Yeah. They didn't really have like a special effects category at that point. Uh, the Searchers, Mike, starring yeah. John Wayne, directed by John Ford, listed as number 12 of the greatest films of all time on the American Film Institute's list, received zero nominations at the Academy Awards. Probably both their best work. Yes, it's, it's considered a, number 12 on a list of greatest films ever. The classic, yeah. <laughs> And it's an amazing film. It's probably John Wayne's best performance. Mm-hmm. He probably should have won the Oscar for that. He got it for True Grit, but I think that was more like a, a career Oscar. Probably. Yeah, and, and same thing with John Ford. Like, the man won four Oscars already. You can't say, like, he hadn't won enough, but <laughs> come on now. Uh, here's another one. Here's a good one. 1991 Goodfellas lost Best Picture to Dances with Wolves. Because it's art. <laughs> well, let's consider it's it's yeah it's a weird thing and then like subsequently kevin costner beats martin scorsese for best director that year that ain't right <laughs> i'm sorry that ain't right and that was at the time goodfellas was like martin scorsese's like good like godfather like that was yeah. his, like opus mm-hmm. uh marty should have won the oscar he didn't win it till 2007 as i said for the departed but it's it's one of those things where like the academy likes to give oscars to actors for directing it's a weird thing like Robert Redford has no acting Oscars but he has a directing Oscar for the movie Reds it came out in 1981 uh, Warren Beatty has no acting Oscars but he has a directing Oscar Bugsy? it wasn't Bugsy no it, it was, was um, um, it was a movie from the no no I'm oh, sorry I got it wrong Tracy? <laughs> War, Warren Beatty won for the movie Reds uh, Robert Redford won for the movie Ordinary People okay. for director uh, Kevin Costner won for Dances with Wolves. Mel Gibson won for Braveheart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like it's a thing. Like they like to give Oscars to direct to uh, directing Oscars to actors. It's almost like a substitute acting category. It's like you acted in the film that you directed. So here you good go. job directing yourself. <laughs> yeah, you thanks. knew exactly what the director wanted. Although I'm not going to bitch too much about Braveheart. I love that movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, 1999, Shakespeare in Love beat Saving Private Ryan for Best Picture. <laughs> That's, wow. I mean, and I know you love uh, Shakespeare in Love, but not I, over <laughs> but, I, but I, I, even I think like Saving Private Ryan was the movie that year. Like, mm-hmm. it, it's so weird that that won. <laughs> and I like Shakespeare. I do. I like Shakespeare in Love. I think it's an mm-hmm. entertaining film. But that's what it is. It's an entertaining film. I don't think it's groundbreaking like most people when you think of 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 that year people are going to think of saving private ryan yeah this is a good drink i wonder how long so is mine my pinky's up yeah i wonder how long it takes for this to really bitch slap me Mm -hmm. stand Uh, up 
<laughs> I, might, I might be pausing it to go make another one. <laughs> uh, Lord of the Rings, and you and I talked about this before, Mike, yeah, won, won Best Picture for its third film only. That was The Return of the King. That was, I give it for all three. Yeah, that was. It should have won like, every year for that <laughs> movie. <laughs> it, it, it was kind of like, well, yeah, it was one of those like, uh, um, here, this is for the breadth of this project that you made. Um, and also. <laughs> do you, so they, they, all three were filmed at the same time, correct? Yes. So. Wouldn't you just consider it, it? Should it have been not because they were just released at separate times? But I mean, it's it's it is one movie, you know. When mm -hmm. you think about it, it's a nine and a half hour movie, ten hour movie, but it's one movie. So if they give it at the end, it's like we are we are thanking you for everything that you did here and before. Yes, but they were nominated. The, the first one was nominated, and the second one was nominated. Yeah, I mean, they um, nominate they nominated them. They should have won. <laughs> well let's see i'm bringing up fellowship of the rings here uh it was up for best picture and best supporting actor for ian mcclellan that year uh i'm looking to see you mean magneto yeah magneto was up that year but for, but for, but for playing gandalf it lost to a beautiful mind uh it's a ron howard film starring uh russell crowe russell Crow as the uh mathematician Mm -hmm. um really not a movie that stood up very well when you start finding about the real guy <laughs> in yeah. his real life um here's the other movies that year so it's beautiful mind is the winner gosford park moulin rouge in the bedroom and the lord of the rings fellowship of the ring i kind of can make the argument that fellowship probably should have won that year yep i don't know moulin rouge <laughs> Ian McKellen lost uh, Best Supporting Actor to Jim Broadbent that year for the movie Iris Really? The other actors that year were Ethan Hawke for Training Day Ben Kingsley for Sexy Beast and John Voight for Ali So, yep <laughs> Okay Yeah, let's see Two Towers Now, Two Towers is probably my least favorite of the three films uh, I know some people would think that I'm crazy for saying that. I know people who like the second movie the best. It's because of the tree talkers. Yeah. Let's see what beat that movie that year. This is 2003. That year, the picture nominees were Two Towers, Gangs of New York, The Hours, The Pianist, and Chicago. That year's winner was Chicago. Chicago. Now, that was actually a tough year because it was between probably that, Gangs of New York, and Chicago. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's a split vote year. Yeah. Um, but I agree with the other two, at least, Fellowship and, and Return having been the better movies that year. And the only acting no nomination that Lord of the Rings ever gotten was Ian McKellen for Best Supporting Actor. And I felt Sean Astin deserved at least, at, at least a nomination for the third film. Oh, definitely. You know, just, just for that scene alone where he's like, well, I can't carry it, but I can carry you. Like, come on, man. <laughs> and the um, actor that plays Sneagle couldn't even get a nominated. Yeah, because well, he's a role. CGI. Because of, of the mocap stuff, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's bullshit. Just crap, right? because he was acting the part the whole time. They they talked about actually adding that as a category, like best motion capture actor, because mm -hmm. it's such a popular thing now in, in films. And, I mean, that would have been nice because, you know, Andy Serkis would have had 18... Oscars at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would have been been, been between like uh, him and and the guy that does all the tall monsters in the Guillermo del Toro films. <laughs> yeah. I can't think of, <laughs> can't his, think of his name. Right you know what I'm talking about though. Mm -hmm. The guy that plays Ape Sapien and uh Yeah. Uh fuck, I got to look it up. Now. It's going to bother me. I fucked it up. Um Hellboy. Let's do the 2004 one. Yes. Hellboy, that was uh, Doug Jones. Yep. Doug Jones. Doug Jones. Samuel L. Jackson lost his only acting nomination to Martin Landau for Ed Wood. Samuel L. Jackson oh, well. was nominated for Pulp Fiction. And a lot of people thought that he was the, the one running away with the award that year. 
and then Landau got it, and it was looked at as kind of like one of those career Oscars, you know. Mm. Didn't uh, he get an honorary Oscar this year? This year, lifetime he achievement, a lifetime achievement Oscar. Yes, so he finally got it. Finally got an Oscar, and he deserved it. Mm-hmm. Peter O'Toole, considered one of the greatest actors who ever lived, Lawrence of Arabia himself, never won an Oscar. Have you watched wow. the uh, watched the movie? Have watched the rest of what? Have you watched that movie with him in it, with Robin Lawrence. Williams? What movie, Robin Williams? And Peter O'Toole. Oh no, I have not watched it yet. No. <laughs> Club Paradise. He didn't get nominated <laughs> for that film, so <laughs> should have. Uh, so here are <laughs> actors and actresses who have never won an Oscar yet. There's a couple on here who I think will win one eventually. Uh, Peter O'Toole has never won. Glenn Close has never won an Oscar. That's that's surprising. It's, it's amazing because she's been nominated a million times. Amy Adams has nine nominations and no wins, uh, but she's somebody I think will win eventually. Bradley mm-hmm. Cooper has nine nominations. He's been nominated for actor, supporting actor, producer, and director and writer. He'll win it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he'll win he needs another silver, silver linings playbook. Yeah. Ian McKellen has never won an Oscar. That's a crime. They probably should have. Mm-hmm. Alan Rickman never won one for Snape. Never even nominated for one. He could have been nominated for Snape. Yeah. yeah. Should have been nominated for Hans Gruber. Mm. <laughs> he been, he should have been, no, he should have been nominated for the uh, the sheriff of Nottingham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the best part of that movie. Uh, Harrison Ford was nominated one time in his career, Best Actor for Witness, but has never been nominated for anything else. Although Harrison Ford, I don't think, has really done many movies where he was playing a character that would be like an Oscar character. Wait, Fang. <laughs> Boy, thing. <laughs> Wait, the president. Forgetting Henry. Yeah. Indiana Jones. Come on. For, for that cardboard cutout he played in the movie Sabrina. <laughs> what was the role? It was him and Michelle Pfeiffer. It was a thriller. Uh, oh, what um, lies beneath? What lies beneath? Yeah, that was good. That was good. It was a change of pace for him because he played the villain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. He could have gotten nominated, I think, for uh, uh, The Fugitive. I mean, Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then last year was the Chadwick Boseman debacle, where the Academy actually made the Best Acting Oscar the last award to be given that night, a first in Oscar history, because it was almost certain that Chadwick Boseman was going to win the Best Acting Award posthumously. And then they opened up the envelope, and it's uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins, who wasn't even at the ceremony because he thought he was going to lose anyway. Yep. <laughs> that. Now, I haven't seen the movie he won for, The Father. For all I know, it could be an amazing performance. Um, but they really like set themselves up for failure on that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't count your chickens for they hatch, as they say. Does anybody need a... Uh, a minute. I could I could use a break. Yeah, I need to go refill my drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating Oreos because nothing goes better with a bitch slap than an Oreo. Mm. Uh. Oh, quiet. <laughs> does my chewing sound as loud to you as it does to me? Oh. <laughs> What's that? I can't hear you. <laughs> Someone's chewing awful loud. Yeah. <laughs> we'll save those for after the show. Uh, uh, welcome back, everybody. We took a little mini break from our Oscar celebration to refill our drinks. Kevin, you're continuing to celebrate with some champagne. That's right. Michael, what are you drinking? Same. Same beer. Same beer. And I, just, whole made, six pack I of... just made my second bitch slap cocktail. Which I can already feel is leading to a little bit of slurring later on in the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So our second segment, main segment this evening is Oscar flubs. Oscar flubs are mistakes that are made during the Oscar celebrations. Never. Things that are a little bit embarrassing. Some of them are really funny. Uh, I had two links on here that disappeared and I don't know what happened to them. 
let me see if I can find them because I had some links that would like uh, explain the uh, a couple of the things on here. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, I missed something in my uh, in my notes. Okay. So, that I have a strange fascination with the in memoriam segment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Adrian wants to see. I know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> something, about, something about it that like makes me want to watch it. You know who they missed in memoriam this year? Bob Saget. Rice. <laughs> oh, well. I don't missed, know about. They missed Bob Saget as well. <laughs> True. I was going to say Anne Rice. And, I mean, not that she did a lot, mm -hmm. but she's gotten at least two um, movies under her belt. I mean, she was credited, I think, with the screenplay, I want to say. Um, but I don't know, you know what I mean, other than her name being on the on the interview with the vampire and all that. Mm. I'm not sure. Queen of the Damned. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's one that you would really want to be remembered for. That's no. So let's see here. There it is. <clears throat> There we go. All right. So I'm ready to go. <laughs> so welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Films and Fermentation. This is our Oscar episode, and we are talking about snubs and flubs. So let's take a look at some of those flubs. And bit, best picture goes to La La, La I mean, Moonlight. <laughs> <laughs> that was Warren Beatty, wasn't it? That was Warren Beatty giving the award, and I think they handed him the envelope that had uh, Emma Stone's name for best actress for La La Land accidentally um, or something along those lines. But I feel bad because it made Warren Beatty look like this doddering old man. And it honestly wasn't his fault. <laughs> nope. But that was whew, talk about you know, you, when you think the Oscars can't top themselves for embarrassing moments, such as naming La La Land best picture instead of Moonlight. Will Smith goes and slaps the shit out of Chris Rock, and we're right back. Oh no! <laughs> right back where we started again. Um, it's a weird movie. Like I, I never saw Moonlight. I have. I still haven't seen it yet. Nope. I, uh, from from what I've heard, it's a really good movie. But I mean, for me, the movie that I remember most that year is La La Land. You know, and it, it probably should have been Best Picture. Uh, there was the year that James Franco and Anne Hathaway co-hosted the Oscars. Not oh no! What's that, Kev? Not awkward at all. Oh man! <laughs> There's a segment where James Franco comes out dressed as Marilyn Monroe, mm -hmm. and it was probably the least awkward moment of the night. <laughs> he, he looked like he smoked three bowls before he came out on stage that night. <laughs> I'm sure he probably smoked up for nerves anyway. Probably. And then poor, poor Anne Hathaway is doing her best to kind of like you know pull the train back onto the tracks and no it was it was a very embarrassing year oh yeah probably not as embarrassing as the year rob lowe sang a duet with snow white <laughs> <laughs> rob, rob lowe not really known for his singing chops uh no no singing a song with snow white and this is uh not, something, right? not not too relatively long after he was accused of having sex with a 16 year old <laughs> wah, wah. Wah, wah. marlon brando wins best actor for the godfather the award is accepted by sashin littlefeather who protests hollywood's treatment of native americans <laughs> and uh, later on was found out that she herself was not a native american she was an actress hired by marlon brando <laughs> 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 to go up on stage and accept his award for him and give her a little speech about Native Americans because Marlon Brando just wanted to sit at home and eat some Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> and that was uh, uh, 2003, Michael Moore gets booed. And what I, was that for? Uh, he won uh, Best Documentary for Bowling for Columbine that okay. year. And then got up on stage and went into this whole diatribe about how George... W. Bush needs to stop his fake war in Iraq. And it was all like these, like, he just went on this like, <laughs> like crazy political rant. And it was it was funny because you consider how liberal uh 
Hollywood is that they booed him off the stage for what was essentially a, yeah. a you know anti conservative rant. Uh, but that was a weird one. You haven't really seen him back at the Oscars since. <laughs> no. no. Adrian Brody wins Best Actor for The Pianist and then gets up on stage and kisses Halle Berry without her permission. Somebody who mm. got the sla- shit slapped out. <laughs> she later on they asked Halle Berry what she thought about it, and she's like, "I didn't know what the fuck was happening." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't get away with that nowadays. No. Wasn't there another thing like that with um, Casey Affleck and? Brie Larson, or was that just awkwardness on stage because of him winning? She presented, and she had won actress the year before, so presented to him for best actor the following year. He won for Manchester by the Sea, mm-hmm. and it was right around the time that there were allegations coming out against him for like sexual misconduct and things like that. Okay, so it was like one of those weird things where like he was, he was like hadn't been like totally like. Uh, blamed yet but the stories were starting to circulate right it was around that time where like you know half the actors in hollywood were running and hiding because they were afraid their names were going to get called next uh 2013 seth mcfarland hosts the oscars and opens with a number called we saw your boobs in which, <laughs> God. in which he points out actresses in the crowd and names each time we saw their boobs in a movie that's a classic. Come on. That's not a flub. <laughs> because the actresses didn't look none too thrilled. <laughs> I mean, all right. Which made it great. That's great TV. <laughs> in, 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 his, in his defense, if you don't want somebody to point out the fact that you showed your boobs in a film, don't show your boobs in a film. That's right. Oh, yeah. You have that choice, yeah. unless, unless you worked for Harvey Weinstein at the time. But then yeah, like, it, was, it was a very awkward opening number. Uh, I have to look this one up because I don't remember what this was again. Uh, uh, the next one I have there, Patty Chayefsky versus Vanessa Redgrave. She won an Oscar in 1978 for Best Actress and got up on stage and gave like this really long political rant about something. And then Patty Chayefsky comes up next. He's the next presenter and basically lambasts her before he goes and presents the award that he's giving out telling her that this is not a forum for political statements and all that stuff. Like the kind of stuff we're still complaining about 30 years, 40 years later. Yes. The wickedly talented Adele Dazeem. <laughs> Thank you, John. Um, John I call you John Belushi. Well, <laughs> close <laughs> enough. <laughs> John Travolta. John Travolta. John Travolta. John Intr- Candy. Introducing Adina Menzel to the world. <laughs> Adele Dazeem. And then the next year they did a they did a spoof of that where she came up on stage, introduced him, and she introduced him as like uh as like Gobot Gorsham or something like that. It was like a real weird <laughs> name. Uh 1974 was the Streaker incident. This is David Niven, English actor, was doing a presentation when a streaker ran across the stage behind him. Dude was was completely butt ass naked, runs behind David Nevin on stage with his hands up like this with the peace symbol, you know, mm-hmm. and oh, runs and funny. runs off the stage. And people in the in the crowd were like laughing and, and like erupted with laughter. And David Nevin, in all of his British composure, turns back to the microphone and says, "Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was almost bound to happen sooner or later." <laughs> It's fascinating to think that probably that is the only ma- laugh that man will ever get in his life is by stripping off and showing us his shortcomings. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, way to be on the spot there, Mr. Nevin. <laughs> yeah. And that was considered one of the most famous flubs in Oscar history until 2022. The slap heard round the world. <laughs> Keep my wife's name at your motherfucking mouth. And I like Chris Rock's like, dude, it was a G.I. Jane show. Oh, okay. <laughs> Keep my wife's oh, name at your motherfucking, motherfucking mouth. mouth. And he's like, okay, I will. <laughs> <laughs> and then he started introducing the best documentary. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anything will beat that unless somebody gets up on stage next year and like stab somebody in the nutsack. <laughs> They fight I, someone's boob. Yeah. 
I read a whole bunch of things that like the the uh, the academy asked him to leave after that. And he refused. Now mm -hmm. TMZ's saying that that didn't happen. I know. There's so many. There's all kinds of conflicting reports. You Some know, people it, think it was staged. Uh, yeah, because like Chris Rock's ticket sales uh, uh, doubled the next day <laughs> for his upcoming tour. I read an article. He apologized to the to the three women that hosted the show afterwards. Chris Rock. Chris Rock did, yeah, but um, did. I heard Wanda Sykes said it shouldn't. You shouldn't be apologizing. It should be mm -hmm. Will Smith. Well, he apologized to her, saying like, "This should have been your moment, your night. You were the host. It's yep. all about you." And all anybody's going to talk about is this incident. Mm -hmm. He, he kind of was like blaming it for telling the joke in the first place. But I'm like, he's a comedian. He tells jokes. That's what he does. Right. He did that when he was the host of the show himself a few years ago mm -hmm. god forbid they should get ricky gervais to host the oscars next year <laughs> <laughs> he's the best thing about the golden globes the last few years <laughs> so uh gentlemen how are your drinks this evening very good <laughs> wonderful so kevin was very classy tonight drinking with his pinky out little champagne flute that's right. Champagne I even has some raspberries floating in there. That's right. <laughs> I got floaters. Yeah. <laughs> and a sinker. <laughs> Mike took it easy, just hitting some uh, some good old lager tonight. Yep. I got bitch slapped twice. <laughs> I got bitch slapped once. Yeah, so I can't really recall the last time I went to the Chamonix Creek. I think it was with you guys. I think it was um, the Great Outdoors. Wow, we're watching. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. I only, it's been a while since the Shaman Creek. I feel like I, I went back another. Katie and I went back once for another like movie night that they had, and there were so many people there we couldn't get in. Mm. Yeah, and then we ended. Oh, we met uh, you guys at Broken Goblet afterwards. Right, right, right. right. You said we we called you. and We're like, don't even try. And the Shaman Creek's just too busy. <laughs> Yeah, I just went to Iron Hill last uh, last weekend. Yes, I and, saw. Uh, it was very good. They had a good selection. How I forgot the, how good their beers are. Strawberry, was it strawberry lemonade or something? Or? Strawberry milkshake. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it was good. It was really good. <laughs> that sounded good. <laughs> mm -hmm. So before we go this evening, Mike, would you like to hit us with some beer wisdom? Yes. No matter what life throws at you, a cold beer will always help. <laughs> long neck cold ice cold brew never broke my heart, my heart. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining us evening for episode 55 oscar snubs and loves so make sure you uh join us for episode 56 we're going to be recording that episode on april 7th which is national beer day so our 56th episode is going to be a salute to beer. Uh, we will be spending, no a, yeah, we'll be spending a majority of that episode talking about the alcohol itself. We might throw a few movies in there since this is a movie and alcohol podcast. But we would like to celebrate that thing that uh, Ben Franklin once called God's greatest gift. <laughs> and that is an ice cold brew. So once again, thank you for joining us for episode 55, Snubs and Flubs. Make sure you join us again next week at the crossroads between pickled and fermented. In the meantime, you can drop us a line at filmsandfermentation at gmail.com or visit us at any of our social media or podcast links via linktree.com slash films and fermentation. I'm Leo. I'm Kevin. I'm Mike. We hope you enjoyed listening to this episode as much as we enjoyed recording it for you. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.